here. Uh, my presentation uh, reports on the work that is uh, performed uh, in our group for uh, some time now, since recently, uh, one year and something more. Uh, we are operating within an official project, uh, which uh, very conveniently has an acronym Madeira, so that's very, very nice. We thought, and in fact it deals with, in the end, development of machine learning based models and solutions for estimating of material parameters and properties, uh, cyclic, fatigue, and uh, those related. Uh, however, the, the current uh, discussion uh, deals with, uh, with improvement of existing, so um, uh, analytical models uh, which are also used and developed over uh, quite significant uh, time now, since the somewhere middle uh, from the, the past century, 1950s, 1970s especially, uh, as we feel it is very important to make the connection to existing methods and to see how the new ones uh, relate uh, to them and uh, how they uh, actually perform. Uh, so uh, what is also uh, worth to, to notice is, uh, are the challenges. So this is the main motivation for development and using of estimation methods. I'm sure that uh, you have attended the, the plenary lecture by Professor Fatemi this is uh, still a very uh, relevant topic and uh, they are now applying it to also editing, <coughs> and materials, 3D printing and so on. So there is always the need to avoid excessive experimental testing if possible. Uh, it's always convenient to, to get some information, to get some data without uh, spending too much time, too much uh, money and energy. So that uh, the topic is, is definitely uh, worth considering. Uh, regarding the, the, the models that we are dealing with, primarily I won't go into details, this is all too well known, so we are talking about, in this case, about Baskin, Coffee, Manson, fatigue uh, model and parameters for crack initiation or, or uh, time to failure, and the idea is to uh, try to determine them uh, from monotonic material uh, properties. Uh, as for some existing models and, and the expressions which were developed over the past time, so I, I will not go into, into uh, details. Here just uh, some which are most illustrative. So the, the first one, so to say, was the original universal slopes method, which is uh, rather compact, uh, rather relevant, uh, elegant, sorry. So we can see that, for example, uh, fatigue strength coefficient uh, is, is estimated just using uh, ultimate strength. We have some coefficient uh, exponents which are approximated by, by constant values and we can see here also this uh, true fracture strain which is, which is used to estimate the fatigue ductility coefficient. Uh, more complex expression I'm, I'm showing it just to illustrate is uh, that proposed by again Manson four point correlation method, but uh, already at the first sight is rather uh, bulky uh, and clumsy, inconvenient, and especially it also requires a number of uh, parameters which are not uh, readily available even from monotonic tests. So, true fracture stress, true structure fracture strain, again de uh, demands additional effort to determine them. This is no wonder then that uh, in, in practice mostly uh, are applied uh, methods which are our most uh, compact, so for example uniform material law, the first version, this method has seen a number of upgrades and further developments, but what we can see here is that uh, only ultimate strength is used for estimation uh, of, the, of the whole expression, uh, I mean other parameters are either constant values or are calculated with, with some additional intervention, you know, considering the uh, the material that falls into certain subgroup relating to uh, ultimate strength. Again, a method that was mentioned uh, earlier at the conference is the hardness method proposed at uh, that time in 2000 by uh, Roslo and Fatemi. Again, apparently it performs very well, it is very convenient to use and uh, also I'm mentioning here for reference, again, very simple expression, uh, medians method also proposed uh, some time ago in 2004, uh, but again, just for the simplicity and the elegance of the of the expression, of course, the performance is another another question. Uh, regarding other methods, which I'm just mentioning here, so that you can get a better feeling if you're not too familiar with the subject, so we can see that everything goes way back to 1965, and we also have some recent developments 
when we are talking about empirical, so analytical uh, methods. However, with the advent of machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence, things are uh, picking up very, very quickly. So a multitude of these uh, approximation and estimations uh, models are being developed. They are not mentioned here. This is also something that our group does. And but we, uh, what we uh, want to do is to um, have the connection to the conventional method because we are in that way better able to uh, determine how well they perform in comparison to something that is already done uh, earlier by other authors. Uh, this is not always always the case in the papers that are published. Um, regarding just one overview, again, not all methods uh, are mentioned here. Uh, most of them are developed on very uh, different and very varying uh, data sets and number of materials uh, used for development of some of them are rather modest. This is definitely a problem. The, the possibility to expand and to extrapolate, uh, to, to generalize the, the, the possibility of the method to generalize is uh, questionable, but again, uh, this is just for illustration that things are very, very uh, diverse. Regarding the uh, monotonic properties which are used for the estimation on which individual methods are based, so they, they can be seen here. Again, ultimate strength is, is most frequent uh, parameter, no wonder it is the most readily available next to the hardness. Again, you can recalculate one from another very easily. And also we can see here that certain number of parameters are just approximated as a constant values, probably due to the inability to make some more meaningful correlations with uh, other monotonic properties. However, this is not the main uh, topic of the talk today. Uh, what is the topic are the criteria which are used for evaluation on, of estimation methods and the possibility to compare them uh, uh, mutually because otherwise you just have your own results, you can make some conclusions, in your opinion better or worse, but before you can be able to compare it to others, it's, it's rather uh, uh, well, deficient uh, information. So uh, main approaches are uh, for example, correspondence of experimental and estimated data, so either in the form of diagram or some numerical value where we basically try to um, determine how well experimental and estimated values uh, uh, correlate. Another uh, set of criteria are those proposed by Park and Song. There are a number of, uh, of uh, factors here of criteria, uh, which uh, in ideal case have the value of one. And there is, I'm just mentioning it to be complete, the probability density function which was used in the paper of Mejuar and Castro, but I have, haven't seen it applied anywhere else. Uh, so this is just for illustration, although I'm sure you are very, very well familiar with that. One of the primary information that we are looking for is the percentage of data points that falls within a certain scatter band of fatigue life. And this is usually provided in, uh, in, in this way as uh, Rost and Fatemi have provided it. So a certain percentage depending, of course, on the number of materials or the data points that were, um, uh, that were uh, examined. This is called also uh, error criterion later in, in the, the paper by Park and Song. So they have retained this due to popularity because prior to this paper, this was more or less the only uh, way how to quantify how well certain uh, method uh, performs, but they have added some additional uh, uh, criteria. So uh, these are goodness of fit for individual materials, goodness of fit uh, criteria for all materials, so all data sets that are considered, and the average value of all those three. So these two, uh, just a small reminder, uh, are actually uh, able to provide information how well this um, the, the line, which is uh, a result of uh, of correlation of our data to the ideal line, so uh, at 45 degrees, so how uh, how much it deviates from that, and the parameters of of the uh, linear equation are used uh, for that purpose. Again, just uh, just information. So we are using this criteria later on in our analysis. And uh, for more details, uh, well, the paper should be should be consulted. However, one can see here that uh, those, uh, for example, results uh, which are shown here, so method A, B, or C, will result in exactly the same 
value of error criteria, so percentage of data within a certain scatter band, but obviously they are very, very different in their performance in the ability to capture the actual experimental data. So again, this is some additional information that we feel is important to take into account and is often uh, disregarded. Um, uh, what is What we have done, however, is uh, we have noticed that in all analysis performed so far, uh, only the bulk of material data is, is used, so analyzed, and also uh, the analysis are performed for the complete ranges of fatigue life. This results in significant averaging. So you get one number, but you don't know exactly in detail what's behind it. So uh, we propose uh, to perform separate analysis and, and evaluations. And uh, for that purpose, uh, we have uh, acquired, so collected uh, large number of material data. This is just one subset that we have used for this current uh, analysis. So we uh, collected unalloy steels, data, uh, low alloy, high alloy, aluminum, titanium alloys. However, in this uh, presentation, I'm only showing information <coughs> for, for the steels. In order to be sure that the quality of material data is uh, sufficient, we have applied certain selection criteria from all these body of data that we collected, and we have uh, determined experimental and estimated fatigue lives for total of eight total strain amplitudes which are shown here. Um, also, we paid attention not to have some, some, some disbalance in, in the, the, the distribution of material data, so we divided them into so-called lower strength, uh, so low strength materials for unalloy steel, the, we placed the, the, the uh, line at 750 megapascals and similarly with some differences for two other subgroups. One can uh, perhaps argue whether this number, this uh, strength is uh, correct, but we also wanted to avoid having too many materials in one subgroup and too little in the other. So for this analysis, uh, this is how it was selected. Also, the fatigue light uh, was um, uh, divided at 20,000 uh, load reversals, so the, the borderline between low cycle and high cycle fatigue. Uh, as for the methods which are taken into account in this uh, analysis, uh, this will be extended uh, uh, after, after this preliminary report. So these are most simple methods which I also mentioned earlier. And here we have the results which we obtained. So we have them for non-alloy steels, for low alloy steels, and for high alloy steels. So this is significantly more information uh, that we uh, actually obtained that is usually the case. Usually, normally, you only get the information for this all, um, combination of material data where you have all materials and all fatigue lines. However, what we can see here for certain methods, I will just point uh, your attention to some uh, cases. For example, hardness, uh, estimation method of hardness, for instance, uh, has very low uh, percentage of data for high strength material in low cycle fatigue regime, so only 20% of the data points fall within the scatter band of 3. There is also additional information for, for example, scatter band of 2, and also uh, if we didn't do the, the detailed analysis, all we would have is this uh, very, very general average information that 80, almost 85% of the data falls within that scatter band, and perhaps uh, you, would, you would possibly make very large error if you would implement these estimation methods, perhaps for some subgroup of materials with higher strength in this particular low cycle fatigue regime. The similar, so this would now take, of course, more time to go into details, but uh, the similar information can be extracted also for uh, other subgroups that can be seen here. Again, this is just an illustration, motivation to move forward with this analysis that we are performing. And this will also, uh, well, we have confirmed that this, uh, so to say, makes sense. And this is the methodology that we will then also use to evaluate uh, machine learning based predictions and estimation models that we are developing in the framework of our, of our project. Uh, on previous work, we have also performed some, some initial uh, analysis on a single material, for example, one that is very, very popular, 42 chromolydan 4, where we have again implemented uh, the same estimation methods, I'm uh, almost done. So this is, for, for example, the information shown graphically for 
all materials and all fatigue lives, so rather average information, but for example, when you pay attention to uh, some particularly uh, uh, interesting material subgroups of high strength steel <coughs> that are dealt with now, you can see that certain methods perform very, very poorly. For example, only hardness method uh, is, is uh, so to say, relevant and uh, recommendable to be used for this one particular case. So, uh, generally, instead of conclusion, uh, the idea is to use this uh, confirmed and developed proposed more detailed methodology in further analysis that we will perform and uh, to uh, evaluate also other uh, and compare how our proposed methods compare to other which are already in existence. With this, I thank you for your attention and for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, is there any question? Yes. Are you also looking for relationship between certain, uh, or use machine learning to look for relationship between monotonic uh, properties and FT properties? Yes, uh, we have already done uh, some significant uh, work, number of analysis, uh, where we have uh, also performed details, statistical analysis, uh, members of uh, our team, where we have tried to determine which uh, monotonic properties are actually relevant for estimation of individual either cyclic or fatigue parameters, and we are also looking into the possibility to uh, estimate the behavior of the material, so to go directly to the either stress strain cyclic curves or strain life fatigue curves and so on. So the answer is yes, we are considering many more uh, material properties. However, we always try to, to keep in mind that the less the material data that you need to, to go into the estimation, it's easier for the, for the end user because, as again, for example, true fracture stress and true fracture strain are, they are not prob problematic to determine, but they are very rarely available in, in practice when you have to do something. Okay, no other questions? Let's thank you again. Thank you. Thank you.